Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over the earnings tab within the Thinkorswim platform. Now, before we even get started, the way to access this page is by going to the Analyze tab up here at the top. We're going to go from Analyze over to Earnings, the very last tab at the top of the page. And before we do anything else, I would definitely recommend you link this tab up to everything else that you have linked up together. So in my case, I've got it set to a red one so that my watch list down here control the earnings tab. So all I have to do is click on my watch list and it changes the earnings tab accordingly. Now, the entire purpose of this tool is to research the effects of earnings announcements on the stock itself and the derivative pricing. Now, those of you trading stock could find this page useful because on this page, we can see the previous five days price action following five days price action. And maybe you guys can see a pattern in there. But I will say most of you using this page are probably trading options. So you can see what the impact of volatility has been during like a run up to the earnings announcement and then what happened to volatility after the earnings announcement. Now, breaking it down from top to bottom, we can see the price history, historical and implied volatility, the price of an at the money straddle, and the projected versus actual earnings for that quarter. Up at the top, we can see the price history for the preceding five days, the actual earnings announcement date and its candlestick, and then the following five days to the earnings announcement itself. Now, this is pretty straightforward, so there's nothing really to get into. Again, this top line, just the price history for the stock for the preceding five days, following five days. Now, where this page gets a little bit more interesting is the implied volatility versus historical volatility, the second line here. Now, jumping right into it, historical volatility is the volatility experienced by the underlying stock. Basically, that's how much the company has moved up or down in relation to its mean stock price over the past year. So if a stock has been typically trading around 100 bucks this past year and it's gone up, let's say to 125, all the way down to 75, its historical volatility would be around 25%. But again, that's the actual volatility that's been experienced by the company over the past year. Now, in pretty stark contrast to that, implied volatility is more of the market's expectation for future volatility of the stock. So again, historical volatility, past volatility, implied volatility, the expectation for the future. So what is the market pricing in that this stock could move up or down for the next year? Now, in general, if implied volatility is higher than historical volatility, it gives some indication that option prices may be high, and if implied volatility is below historical volatility, this may mean option prices are discounted. Now, this is just one thing you could potentially look at. Implied volatility versus historical volatility. Are options expensive right now? Are they cheap right now? Does it make sense for me to start looking at selling opportunities? Does it make more sense to look at buying opportunities? This is what this page is trying to show us. Now, this is not the only place you're going to see this information. If we went over to the charts page, we could add studies. And in fact, I already have. I've got historical volatility versus implied volatility down here on the bottom of my chart. And just looking at the chart, we can see big spikes in volatility surrounding those earnings events. And then directly following earnings, we can see that volatility fall all the way back down to historic levels. And we see that repeated time and time again. And that's, again, why people are typically looking at selling options around earnings announcements because they believe that risk is overstated. Now, I always say we can't look at past results and, and use them as indicative for future expectations. But historically speaking, risk is overstated, which is why I tend to sell options because I believe the edge is on my side as an option seller. Now, some other things that I've added to my chart that I look at again when I'm about to sell an option is both IV rank and IV percentile, both of which are trying to give me some context telling me are options expensive right now and maybe it is a good time to sell some options or are the options cheap right now? Now, I just wanted to point that out before we move on. Again, we can see this information over on the chart, but we'll bounce back over to the analyze page and to the earnings page. Now, another way to use this page is for those of you who are trading long options. And again, volatility decreasing is something that's going to significantly hurt you around an earnings announcement. I'm sure you hear it all the time talking about vol crush. Well, this is where it happens. Implied volatility is typically overstated. And then following the earnings announcement, you see that implied volatility plummet going back to historic levels, which then crushes the value of your options prices. This is one way to see, based on the previous eight quarters or two years roughly, what kind of expectation we can see in a drop of implied volatility. So let's say we went back to fiscal quarter three of ATV again. We can see that uh, it went from 51% the day of earnings all the way down to 46% the day following earnings, roughly decreasing about 5.5%. Now, if we went back the previous quarter, it dropped from 59% to 37%. Now, that's a 20% decrease in volatility. If we went back once again to the previous quarter, 50% all the way down to 41%, roughly 9% decrease. 
Again, the preceding quarter went from 35% all the way down to 27%. Now looking at this, and we're again, we're only looking at the previous four quarters, I could roughly price in a 10% expected decrease in volatility following the earnings announcement. So this would be something I would consider if I'm about to buy a long option, knowing that volatility is probably going to decrease 10% the day following earnings, and I need a big enough move in the stock price to make up for that volatility decrease. Now, again, we're looking at Activision, the third line item here, we're looking at the price of the at the money straddle. If we went over to fiscal quarter three of 2019, we can see that if we had bought an at the money straddle at that time, which would have roughly been the $55 strike, it would have cost a 6.47% of the underlying. That means the price of the at the money straddle would have been roughly $3.55 in premium. If we went to the day following earnings, we can see that the price of the at the money straddle decreased all the way down to half a percent roughly of the at the money straddle. Now we got to keep in mind that that's 0.52% of the closing price the following day. So in this case, that'd be $54.30 times 0.52%. Coming out to a total of roughly 28 cents in premium. So again, this is just the price of the at the money straddle, the preceding five days to earnings and the following five days to an earnings announcement. And really, again, all this is showing us is how much volatility is going to come out of these contracts. The next line item at the bottom is really simple. All it is is the actual earnings versus Wall Street estimates. So down here, if we went to fiscal quarter four of 2019, we can see that uh, Wall Street expected them to hit $1.22 per share in earnings. And the company missed significantly and only hit 62 cents in earnings. The next quarter, Wall Street estimated 33 cents in earnings and Activision beat quite a bit and hit 76 cents in earnings. So it's giving us a nice little breakdown of what was expected versus what the company actually did. Lastly, we'll cover a few little tidbits of information on this page uh, very briefly because I really doubt any of you guys will ever actually go to these features. But up at the top here, we can see a little zoom button. All that's going to do is zoom us in on the candlesticks. So now instead of looking at one day periods, we're looking at 30 minute candlesticks. So if you ever wanted to get some super hyper detail on the preceding five quarters, this is one way to do it. Next, if you wanted to compare certain quarters against each other, maybe you wanted to look at uh, past earning beats and see kind of what the action has been on the underlying volatility or historic volatility and compare those quarters against each other or compare, I don't know, fiscal quarter one of 2019 against the past 2019 quarters and maybe see if there's some, some typical price action around those quarters. Maybe they don't typically beat fiscal quarter one each year. Maybe they typically have a blowout sales in fiscal quarter four and we can plan on that going forward. This would be just one way that you could compare one quarter versus another. Again, I really doubt you'll use this. So we'll go back over to the fit all page to fit all eight quarters in here. And the last thing we'll go over is where you can see the upcoming earnings announcements. Up here in the top right hand corner, we can see the next earnings for Activision is May the 4th of 2021. It also shows us that information in the lower right hand corner of the screen down here, May 4th once again. Now that's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and end the video there. I hope this helped some of you guys out there. Those of you who trade options around earnings, this might help you out going forward. But if there's anything you guys would like me to cover in future videos, please go ahead and leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your ideas and I'd love to help you out as much as I can. And if you did find this video helpful, please go ahead and leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of this content going forward. I have started documenting my personal portfolio and I'm going to put a video out probably tomorrow documenting exactly how much income I made um, in the month of March. And that's entirely from premium selling, basically selling put options, call options against shares or just completely naked in my account and generating somewhat passive income that way. So if that interests you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you stay in tune of all my future videos. But otherwise, I'll go ahead and end it here and I'll catch you on the next video.